try to change. Absolutely. That's like so, accomplishment. Thank you. What is your distribution look like right now? Is it small? Yeah, right now we're only in um, Wyoming, Colorado, and Montana. Um, but we do have an online retailer called Ezra's um, that carries all three of these products, um, and they ship to 32 states. Not ours, but there are those bummer yeah, states that they don't allow you to do. Ezra's.com. Yep. Z R A S. E Z R A apostrophe S. Yep. And they have a great selection of craft spirits. Get really nice whiskeys in as well. They they do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and and yeah, they've been they've been great. It's nice having that option to. Get, to other people because our distribution definitely is going to grow pretty slowly. Um, we are looking at opening up a few new markets, and uh, but we're still really small and we don't want to overextend ourselves. And I, I want to be able to still focus on the quality and not be totally focused right. on the quality. Because um, even with launching 307, I've, it's been made my job a lot busier because now we have two vodkas to make. Right. So, uh, so um, this is part of the same, uh, same principle there. Yeah, yeah. I don't I mean, want to move too much. It's almost like a Harley Davidson. Yep. Uh, ideology. Small batch. You, yeah, you, you control the demand by yep. And supply. Yep, absolutely. And, and that's, you know, for us right now, we, we want to be bigger than we are. We still have a little bit of room to grow within our current facility, our current setup. But I'm the only one that makes it. I literally am the only one that knows how to do this in the business. So we have my mom, my dad, my sister, and me, and not very much else going on. So. Uh, I only have some two hands in 24 hours of the day, right. so. That's the problem uh, with time, is everybody's got that finite amount. Yep. Like, what can you maximize can't, out can't, of your can't get more, so. That's cool, it's a, family, it's a true yeah. family business. Yeah, family. and we, we all jumped in and opened it together, and it was kind of, uh, we're all at crossroads in our lives. I had just graduated from Wild Tech and was gonna go build hot rods. Uh, <laughs> so I it's had awesome. really, it, was, it was fun, I like painting cars, but uh, now I always just get phone calls about fixing somebody's electrical system in their car. I'm like, I don't do that, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> like, I'll be out booze. Well, like so this gin is uh, said that, that citrus. Is it citrus? It smells like um, something different than I should know, but I can't get it. Dr. Juniper. I can name the botanicals if you'd like to uh, yeah. get is an it, idea. Is it uh, chamomile? Nope, it could be elderflower. Probably elderflower. Uh, yeah, it's like the, yeah, it's probably elderflower. That's very unique. Yep. That's great. So this gin was a response to when we talked to people about our vodka and said we're getting a gin. Yeah, contortionist gin. Um, I just wanted to see the picture because I saw it. Yep. <laughs> so we, we actually call this our gateway gin because gin is like 3% of the market in Wyoming. Um, once again, we'll not ever pay the bills or keep the lights on. Right. That's something we wanted because it's one of our favorite spirits. Um, but the, the answer we got, pretty much everybody we talked to was, I can't do gin, I had a bad experience in college. It's that gin. That's the gin. Yeah. 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 Uh, London Dry Gin. Yep. Yeah. 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 because it's the cheap The stuff. Gordons, yeah. 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 They steal it from their grandfather. And I always, I always <coughs> wondered, yeah. yeah, I always wondered who was the kid bringing gin to a college party and ruining it for everybody. And then I realized that was probably me that was doing that. So <laughs> we wanted to make a gin that would. Yeah, making a it's trying to fix it. So, you know, we wanted something that, it's still mostly juniper, it's over 50% juniper berries in, in the botanicals, uh, but we wanted to balance it off and make it a little bit more approachable for these people that have this preconceived thought of that gin is like chewing on pine needles. Right. Um, so it still has the juniper there, but it's definitely blended and masked with these other botanicals. Um, yeah, you almost get it like in the mid palate, you know, not up front as well, the flower sweetness in the back. And it, it's similar to the vodka, it doesn't have like a, it has a drawn out finish, it's, it's smooth, it's not overpowered, it's a little hotter, like a little bit more burnt, I think. It's 90 proof too, as opposed to 80, so uh, um, it's, it's a little higher proof, so that it kind of comes through in cocktails better that way. Yeah. Um, I so thought aggressive gin is actually tend to work better yeah. in a cocktail anyway. Yeah. You know, it, otherwise, you just want to use a vodka. Because okay, you're getting a little bit more flavor. But yeah. So it's uh, juniper berries, coriander, a lot of fresh peeled citrus. Um, I, I try to use dried citrus, which is pretty industry standard, and it just isn't the same. You get to get that bright kind of citrus off of it. Um, so it takes about two hours to peel citrus in the morning, which I don't let anybody else do because I don't trust that they're gonna peel it right. Too much pith. Too much pith, and that will ruin the gin. Um, it's got grapes of paradise, cardamom, coriander, um, elderflower, basil, sage. Um, licorice root, which, I, which actually adds that little bit of sweetness to it. Um, and that's kind of what, we like said, 28 recipes before we settled on this one. And the goal was to make a gin that could compete with Hendrix, to compete with these other gins that are lighter body and, and show people that gin has a lot of possibilities and it doesn't all taste like turpentine. 